Hi, we're Weasels, and welcome back to more creative verse on the Crazy Verse world. Let's start out by showing you what I've been doing so far. Yeah, here. That's the evil wasteland. How I did that was using TNT to blast down to stone level, because grass can't grow on stone, isolating chunks of dirt, and then blasting just the top layer to get the grass off and picking it off by hand <clears throat> quickly enough that it couldn't spread. So each layer was isolated, um, and that's how grass didn't grow back. But, um, the first, if I pull up the map first, you can see that, um, if I go down here, you can see, well, it's not loading, but there's a trench here that goes all the way from canyon to um, a jungle, which I forgot there was dirt under the jungle that could spread the grass, so I went over to the canyon, I mean the savanna there, but the grass won't grow on rocky dirt. So, um, and, from, oops, from there and then up here, it's all the way from the mountains, all the way from the mountain range down to the savanna, cut that because it can't grow through the savanna and it can't grow through the mountains. So I outlined the chunk. Oh, here's, yeah, down here is the line. Okay. And the rest of that hasn't loaded yet, but I, as you can see, I only have this chunk here to do. And then I'll be done. And then, of course, in here, but that's where my mob trap is for now. So I haven't decided exactly what to do with that, where to put it. So... But, um, and that's, this is, um, so where I had a worm spawner, which is now, um, just some floating diamond nodes I didn't get rid of, and so I put swamp water on top of them for some reason, you gotta do something with that, and that's just my ice pillars there, and this that looks like green is actually just the tops of some trees that I didn't clear out yet, they're just floating there because I blew up the bottom. So this is basically what I was working on, or much of what I was working on, is just getting the wasteland started, and then this is the mountain at the face where the big um, obsidian tower is going to be. And as you can see, I'm going to be adding a lot more detail to it by, um, you know, like, this is just the terraforming part getting rid of the grass and making it all look like, you know, an evil demonic wasteland. But, um, adding in, like, burying some chimneys that give up smoke, adding in pools of lava and tar and, um, you know, spires of stalactite and, you know, like, using glass and other things to make all kinds of effects, like using a lot of the corrupt blocks, because it won't actually give off corruption, but, you know, making... I'm kind of getting inspired by, like, some of the, um, imagery in, um, Samurai Jack, when he has to, whenever there's, like, you know, an evil something or other terrorizing the land, and he has to cross, you know, the open, destroyed no-man's land, stuff like that anything that looks corrupted, I'd probably save that for as you get closer to the tower, but I mean, you can't even load the mountain from here, so, but, it's a very vast distance, oops, no, I didn't really mean to go through that teleporter, but anyway, that's good, because that gets us back to here. And I can show you what I've been doing here. Well, actually, no, I want to go back there first. Okay, so, and this was just my farm. Um, as you can see, I haven't worked on the bridge yet. That's what we're going to be doing today. It's gonna, I'll show you the other bridge, and it's going to be that same design, but here. That's a huge expanse to cover, so that's going to be a lot of work. So that's going to be like might be a kind of long video, but I'd like to do it all at once. Maybe I might speed up some of the building. But this is another thing I worked on. This 
I had this idea that I could put all these little hobbit holes down here in the jungle. Like, there's two different races that live in this magical jungle forest. There's the, um, like, spiritual, enlightened, smart race that lives up in the trees. They're, like, you know, primitive, but they're, like, the magical, fairy, like, air spirits or whatever. But then you have the earth spirits that are slightly more aggressive or violent. Well, they're not really violent, but they're, like, more hunters and warriors and, and you know, heavy, brutish, earth-based species, you know, they're like, they're the tunnelers and the molten, you know, and, but the tree provides for all her forest children, just like she gives to the ones in the tree that take care of her branches and leaves, she gives to the ones who take care of her roots, you know, she's, she's like this, you know, everything is in balance and symbiosis, so it's like the extreme yin and yang and having a counterpart, having a counterpart to the ones up there, there would also be an earth-based species, and I may have to redo this recording because Betaverse doesn't seem to want to work right now. Edit out the loading screens. Alright, so as I was saying, um, oh yeah, I almost forgot. I... There, and I put the chimney here, and then I rotate it. So I was thinking, it's not hollow on the bottom, it's not going to look right, but what I can do is I can... Rotate it that way and then shut it off. Oops. Did it twice. So now with it off, it looks like a chimney. I wish detritus grew back. Like, as long as you have wildwood trees above it, I think detritus should grow back like grass. Because it's only the surface layer and there's dirt underneath, so it's a finite resource that runs out quickly. You can't grow more. If you're trying to patch up a jungle or grass is starting to grow over it or they're starting to like shrink or something, you need to Want some extra, or you want to build with extra detritus. Okay. Here. I also was thinking it would be neat if you could grow these. Vines, they would, if they would grow, have many different, um, when you plant them, but that would be kind of annoying if you didn't want them to grow when you plant them. So, um, what if you could fertilize them with pigs and droppings? Only fertilized vines would grow. I think that would be such a cool mechanic. So, Anyway, this video has already been kind of long, and all I did was glitch and um, show you what I've done so far. Fight with a chimney. But anyway, I was thinking having some more vines growing down, whatever. That's my first little hobbit hole for the mole people that live in the ground. Um, so let's teleport back up and see what I've been working on in the main village. And then after that, 
we'll get started on the bridge, and I know this video is already 20 minutes long, but it's going to be a long one because I feel like it. And, um, after we get the bridge done, which I might fast forward through some of the repetitiveness of that, then I can maybe show you some parts of the wasteland close up. So this is what I was working on. This is the bridge design that I'm going to, that I had made off camera and showed you the other, showed you in the previous episode. I'm using the haunted stuff so that it creaks when you walk on it. I like the combination of the fact that the wood planks have their own sound, but then the these creak. So I like the combination of the two sounds. And then this is the house we were working on in the last episode. I got it finally finished. And it's going to go up that way. There's going to be another level above and another level below. You know, but I'm figuring... I don't really know where this is going to lead. There might be more structure here, but then I figured this was a landing pad for gliding because if they're a tree species, they can either, like, jump, like, a supernatural amount that makes them basically fly, or they can actually fly with wings. I haven't decided yet, but, you know. And, of course, all keepers must die. Every one of them. Oh, hold still. Oh, come back! There's no reason to be afraid of me. All I want to do is kill you and harvest your arc stones. Another thing I can show you, possibly from up here, is that, that giant glowing dark crystal inspired, I'm going to build, it's in the very top part of that giant mana tree, and I'm going to, down in the center of it where I had built the tiny little structure that I never actually finished, I am going to build a, um, little, like hidden temples blocks, um, temple, like a little shrine, like they're worshiping the crystal. And that's like a big, like, life force mana crystal, and it's, um, made out of tourmaline, um, with colored lights behind it. The tourmaline itself isn't transparent, so there's parts where I replaced blocks of tourmaline with tourmaline glass, because I figured from this distance you wouldn't see it, but that's just enough to let the colored light through. So it glows like that. So that's a giant, like, crystal structure, and I can show that um, up close in a different video, but that's one thing I was working on. And I know my other videos were um, late, but I figured that this is such a huge epic project, I just wanted to concentrate on this, um, for a while, and I am going to still post the other stuff, I just needed to skip a week and focus on this just to get started on it and get over the initial, um, like, grind you have to do when you're starting out on a world. But... It is nice to be on a multiplayer world where we're all like one giant family and we talk and hang out and have fun because everybody shares resources and it's a it's a wonderful community we got going here. And um this world is open for visitors. Um I'm not gonna tell you the information about it. Um this is Phoenix Talon's world and he has the right to add people he sees fit as builder, but it is a visitor-only world. So you can go to Create Universe by Phoenix Talon and you can check out our builds. You can come in and look at what we're doing, but you won't be able to do anything, and you probably will never be able to do anything because it's not open to everybody. 
as far as building, but if you think stuff I'm building is um, interesting and would like to check it out in person, you can come to his world and teleport to the Duke of Weasels and see my area, but you won't be able to do anything. <laughs>
And that's it. The bridge is done. I've got a couple of these um weathered wood wall like a banded weathered wood wall as some supports. And I've got um you know, using like the fences as bracing in places, but then also using it just as the sides of the bridge, holding it all together. Like over here, I put extra fences here and there to be like. And I'm gonna fill this all in with um, some leaves and make it a little bit less flat or straight. Add a little round off the edges and have a little more texture to the trees on this side of this and probably embellish with lots and lots of vines to kind of soften the edges so that I can take this thing and then you know take down the corners. Whatever. And there's definitely gonna be some sort of building here. This probably could be like a um, main room type building, like a town, not really town center, but like um, a public building, like not a normal house, some sort of meeting place, some sort of communal place where they come to, you know, a communal place where they come to do like important stuff, but then also like a little watchtower here where they monitor the condition of the wasteland. I don't know if we'll have time to actually include this in the video, but let's get a closer look at the crystal. Actually, get a pretty good view of it here. Even though I wasn't really intentionally copying it, it does kind of remind me a lot of the movie Dark Crystal. It looks like there's an extra floating block there that I should deal with, but yeah. I tried to make it like shaped the way a crystal actually would be shaped, but I guess from this far away you really can't see the detail of it. But it's glowing purple and it looks good at night and that's all that matters. So thanks for sticking with me through this extra long disjointed journey and I'll see you all in the next one.